So we need to add a ground plane. We can do that by just adding a flat cube below our other cubes. Um, before I go show you that, I just want to comment that we had previously been setting up a camera and I had just set some globals. I've now got this all organized into a nice camera class. Uh, my vector function may not be the same as your vector function, so this exact code is not going to work the right way, um, but setting up it in a class makes everything a little bit cleaner. So let's go over to our render all shapes function because this is where we're drawing everything. And it's where I was drawing my arm um, or you were drawing your animal previously. So I've just added a new thing for drawing the floor. So I'm just making a cube. Um, I'm setting up my texture on my cube to use it. I've now got two textures running. So I have a texture up here and I have a different texture here. Um, so I've just picked uh, something with some lines on it for my floor texture. And um, because my box starts out between 0 and 1, I moved it over to center at first, and then I scaled it up by 10. And in my y direction, I scaled by 0, meaning I made it into a flat plane. Uh, and then I moved it around some more to get it into the spot that I wanted. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So as I move around, um, we can see that I've, I've got my, my floor here. And we can rotate and, and look around. Notice in the back, Back here, there's something crazy going on with my texture. So you should remember from lecture what this is. This is an example of aliasing. Um, and as we take steps, you can see that there's definitely weird stuff happening in, in the back back here. It's supposed to be lines, right? But they're too thin, and so they don't show up. So the way that we would fix this would be turning on knit mapping, which I have not, in fact, done in this case. And you probably won't have done either. So if you see this, this is, be, this is because our texture is very high resolution with very thin components. 